Grand Rising Loves, happy Thursday. Thursday is a Jupiter day. Jupiter is the planet of expansion. It's the planet of good fortune. It is the planet to receive abundance. So feel into those Jupiter energies today for Thursday. And like I had mentioned, it really is one of the greatest life hacks to figure out in your own natal chart what house Jupiter is in, also um, what sign Jupiter is in for you. And that way you can really figure out how you process that and how you are actually expanding what is your purpose in expanding in this life so feel into those energies this is the pull for the collective consciousness the collective consciousness is everyone including myself but this is the greatest percentage so if it resonates with you then it's for you if it does not then it is not so i also pull for myself and these are not the cards that i pull for myself so it's not a big deal if it doesn't resonate with you it's just not meant for you today because this is current to the day and um, i can always find synchronicities in these but it is not my pull so my pull was actually serpent high tide um the tourmaline and i have gotten this one literally for the past five days so um when i get a card multiple times in a row there's always something very key and um, i normally don't use cards in my sessions but i do use them for myself because as any psychic knows your gifts do not work for yourself. Our intuition works for ourselves. That gut feeling, that um, heart energy that pulls us and drives us, propels us through the human experience, but our psychic sense does not. And so things can feel scary, right? As you're healing your humanness, but it's that great paradox to get back into your human. And so I use the cards to kind of ease the angst of that for myself. And so when I get a pull, when I get a card so many times in a row, I know there is really something that I'm needing to dig into, maybe something I missed. So what I do is I read, um, instead of using my intuition for that card, I read, whatever is written for that card and really feel into what thoughts or information crystallizes between the words because it's not always in the black and white on the page it's it comes in between and so like i said literally for the past week i've gotten that every day so i will later in my quiet break will read that and see what I get and then we'll see if it shows up again so the sacred geometry that showed up for the collective today is the morning meeting and if you see it's got the circular of the feminine energy and the square of masculine but it shows in nature but if you could see the smoky figures of the masculine feminine here the humans you can kind of see it looks almost smoky but it talks about how we communicate. So not only with nature, but how are you communicating with other humans? And do you listen to respond? So if you are that type of listener where you're like, okay, how am I supposed to respond to this? So you listen always with that intention to respond. You're really not listening and you will miss nuances in energy body language, minute shifts, you will miss that because your perception is already going to be tainted. So staying unwaveringly present 
and listening, it doesn't matter if your response has a pause, but you will actually get every single morsel of energy and message that that other person is trying to convey. And that's really important. And honestly, what I experience is that most people do not actually listen. They're really one foot in and one foot out of the experience because we're taught to ha- that communicating is an exchange. And so to come off prepared and supportive, a lot of times people are listening with the intent to respond and it's not a bad thing. It's, I'm not saying that you're shitty <laughs> for doing that. We're taught that right? If you're in a good exchange, then there, there's a back and forth in communication. But the whole point in that communicating is that listening and stillness is just as important as the job of, of responding. So you have to give it equal reverence. So when you're listening, staying so unwaveringly present to everything. So you're paying attention to the body language. You're paying attention to all the little minute signals of communication. It's not just verbal. There's so much more to that. And we have to offer that depth as a listener as well. And so morning meeting really wants you to be aware of how you communicate. And it's not always the verbal. So even the other way, you know, a lot of times when we hold our tongue, if we are the speaker and we hold our tongue, there's something that we don't want to say, but something that we're really feeling, it actually conveys the energy of deceit. And so you really have to be aware of all of those nuances of communication. Be a better communicator. Say all the things, but also shut the fuck up when it's not your turn. <laughs> and stay present when you're listening really listen when you're listening so the next the hunter showed up and so this has been showing up right but now this is a a a good thing to point out so the other card that's been showing up for me that one that deck it doesn't matter if it's in the reverse or upright it's just been showing up this deck does matter so this has been showing up in the reverse for the collective. And so remember it talks about settling for roadkill and to be more discerning, showing up in the reverse. Well, today it showed up in the upright. And so I really, I like that when that happens. Like if it's showing up upright and then all of a sudden it shows up in the reverse, it's like, okay, your, your energy is off a little bit. Maybe you overshot your goal or whatever. But this one showing up in the up right now is, a, is an affirmation of self-trust. <clears throat> so in the reverse, it's saying that you need to be more discerning, right? Don't settle for roadkill. You deserve so much more. And showing up in the up right, it says, okay, you are the good hunter. And what you need to do now is forge your own path. Don't take the path that's already been worn by others. You want to be your own map maker and allow spirit to completely direct your course. Follow your intuition, follow your gut, follow your passion, feel your path. Don't think your path. And so, so many times, It's like the ease of walking a path to say, oh, here's a path, easy. I'm gonna take this one. It's all marked and pretty and worn already. The path is soft. I don't have to like forge my way through thorns and bushes. (laughs) But really, what are you learning or what are you actually getting to see? What magic are you missing by taking someone else's path? So forge your own path. Be willing to be uncomfortable and trust yourself. Because really that's the discomfort. 
The discomfort is not having to cut back weeds. The discomfort is trusting yourself because it's so foreign. We're not taught to trust ourselves. So here, we're not taught to really be good listeners. And we're not taught to trust ourselves. But both of these cards today are telling you to trust yourself. Trust yourself with others. Trust yourself with yourself. And then we're coming into Petalite as being the tool today. And Petalite is a beautiful stone to work with. Petalite is actually one of the, I, it eludes me, the 12, uh, I can't remember what it's called. It's a very specific 12 stones that when they are placed together, they um, accelerate the ascension process. And Petalite is one of them. So, this is a real gemmy petalite. Look at that. It doesn't look like much, right? It's so crazy how some crystals, we expect them to be, you know, like fanciful, like how quartz grows, right? Like this, literally saw it in a basket for a buck. And then when I got, um, when I picked it up, I don't know if I'll be able to get you to see that. It's got two pyramids in the face. Okay, there, you could see a little bit. And I was like, whoa, I don't know if they know that this is in there. So I paid my buck and ran. <laughs> but um, then I read up later and it says that the pyramids will only appear when the person who it's meant for holds it. So maybe they weren't even there. Oh, there you go, the Synergy 12. Thank you, Diana. I was hoping that one of y'all would get it. Thank you, the Synergy 12, yes. Petalite is one of the Synergy 12. This is a gemmy one, and here is a more opaque petalite. So it does have a beautiful like sheen to it, but it's a powerful stone. So it brings us to the now to be like uber present, and it helps to create that peace with self. So being mindful is keeping yourself in the now. It's knowing that time traveling is usually a construct of the ego, first of all. And the spirit can time travel for healing purposes. But when you are in that incessant chatter of time traveling, I should have, I could have, I would have, like that self-berating mindset, or the, I got to do this. This is my to-do list. This is what's next. That is ego construct. And so Petalite will bring you and anchor you into the now, which is so important in order to really trust yourself, which is the message of these two cards. So that's a perfect tool for today. Can you trust yourself? And so trusting yourself is how you really ultimately get aligned and things become effortless. I just had a conversation with a beautiful friend this morning and she said, I can't believe how fast everything's happening. It's just like, everything is like falling in, in place for me. It's just being like effortless and that's alignment. When things start feeling effortless and it feels like it's almost like a, a roaring rapid and just like pulling you through life, that's ultimate alignment. That's like being in the zone. You hear that about sports figures all the time. They're like, whoa, they're in the zone. That's alignment when you're really feeling it and it's working well for you. So the culmination of today's spread is Kanyini and it says in each other we find ourselves. And this is what I've been trying to show with my timeline, fractionating pictures and then putting it together because we are all part of a whole. But each fraction is so perfect and whole on its own. And if you allow yourself to go through life with that curiosity, but also that ultimate self-trust and staying unwaveringly present, then you get to see like, 
oh wow, no one else is qualified to do what I do. I, I better like really own my magnificence, own my uniqueness. That's not selfish, it's not conceited, it's not arrogance. It's actually saying like, hey, I'm part of this whole and I'm willing to actually do my part. That's what that's saying. So walking, forging your own path is actually you willing to do your part because then we all can return to unity consciousness when we do that. It's not a separateness to own your magnificence. Separateness is saying I'm better than you or I'm less than you. That's separateness. Creating a hierarchy is separateness. But uniqueness is saying, wow, there's no one like me. And there's, hey, there's no one like you. Do that thing, girl, brother, do it. And then we all get to be in awe of you because no one's doing what you do. And not feeling any kind of competitiveness or comparison, just really allowing ourselves to admire everyone else around us because they are you and when someone is aligned you can see it they shine different everything about them is different how they move how they talk how they feel their smell everything about them is a full experience there's there's nothing forced about having um, an exchange with someone like that and you do get to be in full admiration with that person. <sighs> that's the spread for today. I actually think that's really cohesive. When you look at it though, if you're looking at it, you're like, whoa, that's a mess. What does that even mean? Morning meaning the hunter doesn't even sound like anything that would be mindful. But then when you hear the meanings of them, when you really allow yourself to be curious and pay attention to the depth of each one, it's like, whoa, this really created cohesiveness. <laughs> That's kind of like the mirror of what we are in this human experience, right? We may look like a hot mess or chaos on our own, but when we all really align and come together, wow, is that fucking phenomenal. So that's the spread for today. Thank you for sharing this time and space with me and gifting me your most valuable commodity, your time and your energy. I appreciate you. I love you. And I am sorry for any disharmony that I have created. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you for this opportunity. I love you. I love you. I love you.